Hello and welcome to my patch notes rundown for the 18th of September. This week's update introduces the simplification of some damage modifiers that have resulted in a slight overall buff alongside a nice ritual of quality of life addition and a long awaited arc lake or fix. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Reorganized a number of damage buffs to work in a more consistent manner. The description suggests it's separate from the random damage changes, but I don't know the specific details so I can't really go into it. I'll be keeping a close eye on PVME to see what this means. Reworked a number of damage buffs that previously only affected random damage to now affect total damage. Before we get into the math side of things, I'll have to make some disclaimers very clear. These calculations only include base values of no other damage buffs like perks and critical strike chance, so they're not going to be completely accurate, but they will provide you a reliable idea of how it has been changed. We're going to work with a basic 20-100% ability damage to keep the results clean, but also because most abilities have a 1-5 to damage range ratio, and the impact will be exactly the same across them all. So what was random damage and how did it exactly work prior to this update? Basically, it took the range of the ability and multiplied it by the percentage damage bonus and added it only to the max damage and not the min damage. Not only is min damage valuable for overall damage, but max damage in a lot of cases is less valuable due to hit caps, but worst of all, it further increases the already ridiculously large damage range, making it much more RNG and inconsistent. This change not only simplifies the calculation, but also makes for a much healthier buff. It now additively multiplies both the min and max damages, effectively providing an overall damage increase of the same value. As we concluded, damage ranges was a multiplying factor for the overall damage boost of these buffs, so when looking at a style like Necromancy where the damage ranges are extremely small, you should gain little to no overall damage increase. With these changes, the listed damage buffs will be 50% more effective with most standard abilities whereas for Necromancy, it's a staggering 1000% increase, 10 times more. Let's look at the listed damage buffs that used to follow the application rule of random damage and have been changed accordingly to total damage. Since there's not much to comment on, I recommend pausing the video if you're interested in the math, but in short, most of these are a slight overall buff. Moving on to the last two buffs, you'll probably notice a red arrow when looking at the revenge change. This is a 25% reduction in effectiveness for most standard abilities and I personally don't see this being commonly used with necromancy since you can't use revenge with bone shield. Revenge is already barely used, so if anything, I think they should have intentionally tried to buff it with this change. From my knowledge, realistically, revenge is only ever used during phase 5 of Telos, when using any style that isn't necromancy, and in those cases, you'll likely be hitting the damage cap, so this might effectively be a buff for the current use cases. Also, in this showcase of a single 100% Telos kill, Something interesting happened. What the... F okay. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Options to disable hero pass messages are now available in the gameplay settings. A new necromancy option has been added in the gameplay settings which ensures the highest tier communion item is automatically placed on the pedestal from focus storage rather than continuing to use the already selected item. This isn't very useful for main accounts as mementos are not only much cheaper but always better than their counterpart bones. Although this addition is pretty nice for Iron Man, I would have liked to see it work from the ritual chest since that's how you naturally obtain higher tier communions. So for now, players are going to have to withdraw and deposit the mementos into the focus storage. The Arc Glacor collection log will now correctly broadcast a world message when it's completed with a weapon craft. Metamorphosis now correctly applies magic damage boost to all elemental forms? 
I was made aware by Rocket Cars that this didn't actually do what we expected. A specific elemental metamorphosis still doesn't boost damage for the other elementals. Let me explain. Since the dawn of EOC, if you transform into, let's say, a fire metamorphosis by having a fire spell active, it will exclusively boost the damage of your abilities so long as you're using fire spells. But if you switch your spells to either air, water or earth, it will no longer boost the damage of your abilities. And with the long running meta of switching spells between Insight, Fear and Exsanguinate, this has unknowingly happened to a lot of players during P7 of Zamorak. So if this patch didn't change that, then what did it do? If you know, please let me know in the comment section below. And that's it for this week's patch notes. The cleanup of damage modifiers to make them better and more intuitive is always a welcome change. Anyway, that's it from me. Thank you for watching and take care.